welcome back to my channel. I am Amira and this is Looking Through Amira. Special welcome if you are new here. Here at LTA we believe in living our dream life, being our best self, even if on a dime, and do all things DIYs, furniture flips, and even some lifestyle tips. are ready to channel your innermost creative badass because today we are going to be doing a thrift furniture flip or a furniture thrift flip whichever way <laughs> we're going to be flipping furniture which is really exciting because it's one of my favorite things to do and i haven't done it in almost a year now and i've been wanting to do it it's just hard i don't have a garage anymore and like transporting it with my car and then just like finding the right piece of furniture but Day has finally come, friends, and I'm super stoked. My TV has been sitting on like an outdoor IKEA chair for the last five months. I feel like that happens quite often to a lot of us. Our TVs like sit on like a bin for a few months and we're like, uh, yeah, we gotta fix this. <laughs> so today we're fixing my problem. This episode is actually gonna be a precursor to several other larger episodes, a whole bedroom flip which is gonna be really exciting because Lord knows my bedroom needs some TLC. And then after that, I'm gonna be doing a full house tour of my little sanctuary. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. So speaking of staying tuned, if you guys could just stop really quick and press that subscribe button, it would really mean a lot to me because I am 103 subscribers away from being able to apply for the YouTube Partner Program. So if you guys will just help you girl out and press subscribe, and in return, you'll be getting DIYs, furniture flips, and ways to be a creative badass on a dime. So you guys know that it's becoming a thing that I make a cocktail in the beginning of each of my videos, right? I don't usually film at noon, and it's noon right now, and it's super hot, and my brain is just so foggy. I made myself triple espresso, but I did find a little thing of Bailey's, um, and it's just been in my fridge screaming at me to be drank, so I think today's the day I'm gonna drink it. Cheers, guys. good <laughs> another quick little interruption if you guys missed my last video it was a DIY balayage video where I did my own hair really with a $12 drugstore kit and a toothbrush still tripping I did so good on my hair so make sure you guys check that out I have been scouring the internet trying to find the perfect piece of furniture to put my TV on in my bedroom. Um, it was kind of difficult because the measurements are a little weird and it's such a small space. I had a long skinny hallway table to put right there that I can put my TV on and that I can also create some storage with. So I was looking at OfferUp, I was looking at Facebook Market, but another challenging thing for me is I drive a car and the back seat doesn't even like fold down. So I was also trying to figure out how I was gonna fit a piece of furniture in my back seat. On Sunday, I found like the most clutch little thrift store ever. It's like a whole warehouse of just furniture and it's marked at a super reasonable price. A few weeks ago, I was there and I came across this particular piece of furniture and I was kind of like, oh, it's really old and it's like shaky. And so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna pass. Sunday, I went back again and it was still there and it was marked down to like 15 bucks. And I started looking at it a little more and I was like, you know what? Like, I think I'm gonna do this one. Honestly, what it also came down to is like, I just needed to pull the trigger, you know what I mean? And it's super dope too. The thrift store will actually load everything up in your car for you. So it was like bada boom, bada bing, good, in the car, let's do it. All right, Whew. fit in the back seat, so we're good. I was afraid that it wasn't gonna fit in my car, but it did, thank goodness, and it was super easy to transport, it was lightweight, the glass popped right out. I was even able to just unload it um, by myself and kind of move it onto my patio so that we could begin to work on it. I just apologize for the background of this video. Like I said, I don't have like a garage. I wish I had a super dope garage that I could do all my projects in. But I don't. It's not the most aesthetically pleasing and I do apologize. Hope that it inspires you that you can also create and live a really creative badass life even if you don't have the proper space to allocate to it. Flip this piece of furniture that I found at the thrift store and turn it into a little TV stand. Carmelo thinks I bought it for him as an outdoor uh, doghouse, but you're wrong, buddy. 
So for preparation, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna rinse it off because Lord knows where this piece of furniture has been. And then I'm gonna follow it up with actually just a good antibacterial spray and spray it down really good just to get all the dirt off and hopefully it's just dirt on it, but you never know what else could be on there. And we're just gonna give it a nice clean wash down. Next thing I'm going to do is sand. This is something I do with most of my projects, even though the type of paint we're going to be using, like a chalk paint, it's so thick sometimes it doesn't matter if you sand it down. But something I realized with this piece of furniture uh, specifically once it got in the sunlight is that there actually was a little bit of water damage. And I don't know if that's something that happened while it was just out on my patio, but it had like droplets and you could tell in the varnish. So we're just gonna sand down the top of it really, really good and even out any bumps that we have, anything that's uneven. I'm just gonna try to get it down as much as I can. And I don't even have a sander. I'm just gonna use the highest grit sandpaper that I can find. What I'm thinking for this project is I'm gonna do like a really thick kind of vintage white chalk paint. And then I'm not gonna paint over that bottom brown basket weave that you have at the bottom, but I am gonna find a matching brown and I'm gonna stencil it in a really cool kind of Moroccan boho pattern. And then I'm gonna distress it, maybe put a little wax on it, and then we'll be done. Now, finding white chalk paint. I don't know if there's something trending or if there's something that I missed. White chalk paint is like sold out everywhere right now. I ended up finding this Martha Stewart. It, it's called like a vintage decor paint and it was like a super thick chalky paint and the color was wedding cake and it ended up being perfect absolutely perfect don't drink my cocktail no baileys so in addition to the prep process i also ended up taping off the bottom shelf just because i want that to stay protected and i start to paint Something that you'll notice about chalk paint is it's exceptionally thick. Like, it's crazy thick, almost like a massive glob. I always end up adding some water to it, especially for the first coat can be a little more like thin and watery, just because I want to get like a good even base coat almost before I start. So that's pretty much what I did. I added some water to it and went over it really good. I'm always really careful with my lines, with my paintbrush. I want everything to look uniform and that's why you kind of see me on the sides like i'm making sure all my strokes are like vertical and that it all flows together nicely i don't want my strokes to look kind of all over the place and super messy So make sure that everything is smooth, including your paint lines, and make sure that you don't have any like, you know, excess paint drips or bumps or, you know, little paintbrush hairs in your paint too. It's just really nice to pay extra attention to those details because it does add up in the end. So filming this project, I was up against two things. I was up against heat. Well, actually, we can make it three things. Heat, sunlight, and flies. <laughs> it is August, so that is not helpful, which is also fly season, which sucks. In order to film properly, too, I can't film when the sun is directly above my head. It just creates too many shadows. That's also the hottest time of day, too. It's literally so hot that even right now, I'm just sweating. So this project took a little longer than expected, but we're making it work. We're making it work. <laughs> just woke up from a little nappy nap. I worked all night last night and then I had to work a morning shift this morning. Home, took a little snoozer. It's still not hotter than the devil's balls out there, you know, because it's just hot. It's a little more shadowed out there and I'm hoping that it's a little more enjoyable and I can just zone out and finish painting this. I look pretty crazy. I got my paintable clothes on. Finish whitewashing this piece of furniture and then 
Hopefully, since it's so hot, it'll dry really quickly. So day three, we're just gonna start doing the stenciling. I have these older stencils, but I went and bought these stencils too, which look really cool. They have some smaller pieces, which will be really nice. I'm gonna stencil it in this brown color, because I'm hoping it ties in this bottom. And then I'm gonna wax it too. So that's the plan for this morning. Hopefully I have enough good lighting to do that. And I'm just gonna start on an edge like this one as like a practice round and then you know the top's the most important so I'll do that last after I get some practice in. After I have enough of the white chalk paint on I'm gonna start stenciling it. I actually got these stencils at Michael's. Get them on Amazon as well. What makes these stencils so cool is actually they almost have like an electrical tape kind of feel and they're super adhesive. So that was super helpful when I was stenciling when I'm sponge painting because it makes it stay in place more. When I first poured that brown color, it actually was so off-putting. I was like, I do not like this. I thought about adding some white to it, but I actually, the way that it dried was so different than the bright brown. It turned into a really pretty kind of like rust caramel color. So at first it was super kind of intimidating and off-putting, but I really liked the way that it dried. So it was awesome. <laughs> the top. I don't want to show you guys too much of this part because, well, long story short, I ended up redoing the entire top. Don't ever be afraid to like try out an idea and see what happens, you know, because you can go back. At least for this project, you can start over. So I was doing the one stencil and it just kind of felt like it was too much. It was like too busy, it was too much going on, I had awkward spaces, I had messed up, and I ended up just being like, I don't like it. I basically went in with some sandpaper and sanded the top as much as I could and went back in with the white paint and repainted it and began again.
ended up going with this stencil and I think it looked really good and it just flowed better and it kind of brought to life the boho side of it without making it look too busy or too over the top. So I ended up repainting the whole top of this. Go figure. I'm gonna do one of my favorite parts. Where I get sandpaper and I'm just gonna distress all of this and then I'm gonna put it in wax and we'll be done. I actually hand paint it a little bit as well just to add some more details and some of the smaller parts of the furniture that were too small for a stencil but I also wanted it to have some character to it. I just go in, I always do the little line dot pattern. Once you feel like your stenciling is complete, that you've done all that you can, it's time for my favorite part, and that is distressing. I love distressing because I literally feel like it just brings it to life. Crazy, because it's kind of backwards. Like, I literally sometimes call it it up. Because <laughs> it's what you're doing. Like, you literally, you're gonna get that highest grit sandpaper and you're gonna up. I want this piece of furniture to look like something that could be found at, like, World Market. So we're gonna distress it, the legs, make sure you get, like, all the little edges of the feet sides, the corners, all of that. Have fun with it, scratch it up, scratch the top, and it just it just brings it to life. This is how it looks after the distressing. I think it looks really great. The distressing always just brings it back to life. And see how distressed the legs are and all the details down here, how distressed it is. So I always finish with a wax. I usually use just like a clear brie wax type of thing. I had came across this lime wax and I decided that I was gonna try it, but I ended up not liking it for this project. It's like a white tint, so it's gonna make it look a little cloudy, um, but it's really good for projects if you just have it white. And I like just an optional step, but if you wanna get wax, just get a microfiber towel and you just get a tiny bit of the wax and you're just gonna apply it in like a small circular motion. My favorite kind of analogy is it's kind of like the lotion to piece of furniture. Do a really small amount and just apply it. So I definitely do like a clear wax. Don't do like a lime wax like I did. And this is the final product. I actually really like the way that it turned out. Um, it's great. It's wonderful. It's boho. It looks like it was from World Market. One of a kind, a Mira specialty item. <laughs> You can't find anywhere else in the world and that's what makes DIYing so awesome is you made it and you should feel proud of it and there's nothing else like it in the world. like a bedroom and I don't know it just kind of ties everything together so I can't believe I got this piece of furniture for $14.99 baby well I hope that this week's project has inspired you guys to go to that thrift shop go to Goodwill go to Salvation Army you can really recycle and repurpose and bring an old trash piece of furniture to life and make it your own one-of-a-kind piece of furniture in your house if you guys liked this video if you found it inspiring or helpful if you would just give me a thumbs up 
help a sister out, press the subscribe button if you haven't already, and comment below and let me know what you think and if you're gonna take on a project similar to this one. See you guys next Friday with another DIY project, but in the meantime, love hard, be a light, and always have a little faith in your future. See you guys next time, bye! child within my heart rise above can it sail through the changing ocean tide can i